and it all kind of started years ago and with you guys, so I'd like to talk about the impact you guys have had all throughout my amateur radio uh, career and through the future as well, because my career will definitely include bringing Eric a little bit farther. So I, I was licensed in 2015 uh, when I was eight years old. I then, like from the very beginning, I started out in space. So I've been in this community for um, nine years, I think, and you guys welcomed me in, and my very first contact was over satellite. And so I, it became a whole family thing. That's my little sister, Grace. Uh, her call sign is Kilo Equipment Golf. I know my middle is Tulima. So we, it became a whole family thing. We all got our extras. Uh, me by the time I was nine. And we had a lot of fun with it because it became a, a family event to go out. But then it's also become my dream to do space. And I received the opportunity to talk to space. Uh, you all have just heard Ruth, so in the very first one, in, back in 21, at Yoda Camp, I was one of the participants. So I spent a few years in my early amateur radio career receiving signals from the ISS, getting a slow scan, and uh, being active over the satellite. What I really wanted to do was talk to the astronauts and be able to hear what they have to say about this wonderful community. And I got the opportunity to talk to them. It was so much fun to be able to hear firsthand. And at that point, that's the, around the time where I started to think about what do I want to do with myself, you know? Um, and I decided I want to go to space. I want to be that astronaut who's up there and talking to the kids down on Earth and inspiring them to do all these amazing things. So that is my goal, and that's what I've been working towards, is bringing amateur radio back up on the ISS as, uh, and beyond, which I'll talk about later. Or right now, actually. Um, I have been trying to get into the space program. And to do that, I'm taking several different routes and programs all at once. I was invited to attend the Mars Desert Research Station in 2022. I was the first high school crew, we were an international crew, and we were able to perform research at the Mars Desert Research Station. So this station is a facility, as you can see, it's out in the middle of the desert in Utah. And in case you didn't notice, the terrain looks a little bit like Mars, just a little bit. And the area there simulates the surface of Mars. You go there and you live in the habitat, and you perform your research as if you're in a pressurized habitat, living on Mars, doing your research. And I was able to build the radio station that got to go to Mars for the first time and I was able to make contact. So if any of you guys worked me, you can just keep up to yourself, right? I was able to perform actual academic research as well. And then some of my crewmates there, we were doing soil studies, but of course, we're a radio book, so I had to include radio in my research. And I was able to test a radio mesh network to send and receive, uh, well, to, to send data that we would receive at the habitat create a redundant system, and I was able to use the skills that some of you people here actually taught me. And, of course, you miss, uh, Rachel is not here anymore, but I'm sure you've all met her. She also got to attend the Mars Center Research Station. She got to make more contact than I did. She beat my record. And so this station has been used by several crews at the Mars Center Research Station as they're performing their research. And one day, I hope to bring radio to the lunar surface or to the Martian surface, hopefully both. Um, and to get there, with some of the other programs that I've been able to do, I was selected to go to uh, Project Fossil, which is actually near here, in a big at Florida Tech, and they teach you how to work in the orbital mission. So that's a simulation that we did where you are in a pressurized intervehicular suit, and you uh, we train how to work in it, how to do mobility tests, and we was able to train ourselves um, what is it like in this environment, because that's a, a very different place. We want to go up to space and bring radio and say, well, how are you going to get there? How are you going to operate it while you're in your suit? And it was a really interesting experience, especially because 
I got to do all kinds of fun stuff. I got to do some of the initial training that astronauts do, such as high G and zero G flights, and it was a lot of fun. And I was able to utilize radio skills in all of this because they, they said I was the best communicator using the radio system that they were trying to spend a long time teaching us. I knew how to do it because of this. And so the title of my presentation earlier was uh, Errors, Past, Present, and Future, because that's what I've done in the past. Currently, at the present, I am now a real student. In case any of you guys don't know where that is, it's right in Daytona Beach. We are a huge aviation and airspace school. And I am the new president of the Amateur Radio Club on campus. We have an airs contract on the house. And I am loving research and loving this school. And it's a wonderful community of nerds, just like these people. I mean that in the absolute best way, because this is, this is my place to be currently. And this is going to get me where I want to go. And you guys helped get me here. Scholarship, I wouldn't be able to attend this if it weren't for all of you guys and the knowledge that you poured into me. And so, for the future, I have to, I have to touch on this, obviously. For the future, these are the future generations. These are the kids uh, in my radio club at the end of last semester. We, uh, we're big goofy, but we are trying to organize an heiress contract coming up this April. So look out for us, and we will be working with a bunch of middle schoolers. All of us have been so much, we've helped, been helped so much by you guys. And so I wanted to thank you all for that, because these, these same kids, who you train, we're now going to the middle schools and we're, we're doing all that we can to, to pass on the knowledge that you've given us. And in the future, I wanted to touch on this as well, before I forget. Um, so we heard from Owen Jarrett's son. Owen Jarrett was a ham who happened to become an astronaut. And when he went up there, he took that enthusiasm as a ham with him. He wanted to talk to all of the community. And that's what you guys have raised me to see. I've known a lot of you guys half my life now. And one day I do plan to be an astronaut, so I'm gonna be super busy with research. That's okay, I love that. But I'm gonna make time as a ham who happens to later become an astronaut. I want to do the education contact. I want to take it to the moon. Can you imagine an heiress contact? You know how many kids we could get if we were on the moon? You could have half a day just for that. And that is my goal, to take heiress beyond. When they, one day heiress is no longer heiress, maybe it'll be air, <laughs> they are moon or something, I don't know. But the future is, is bright. I want to be a part of it. I want to continue this on, even long after the ISS is decommissioned. I want to take it further, because that's, that's what you all taught me to do. So thank you.